Uh, at this time, I'd like to call upon Sister Afia Siddiqui. Uh, Sister Afia is going to be a sophomore at MIT, inshallah. Uh, she's, met, uh, she's doing her, her, her uh, major is in genetics, and she'll be leaving day after tomorrow. Sister Afia is, is going to be involved in MSA at MIT, and she's already the DAWA coordinator, and she's already started work. Alhamdulillah. Please, Sister Afia. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. It is my challenge, not only to every single person on the face of this planet Earth, but also if there's any civilization on any other planet, it's my challenge to them as well. That Islam is the best savior and protector for women. And I am saying this with all this confidence, not out of arrogance, but because I believe that Islam was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most just and merciful God, the God biased neither in favor of men or women, the creator and sustainer of both men and women. Islam elevates women to a level that has no parallel. Let's just take one example. Our Western philosophers and saints, they say that woman is the seat of the devil, but the Quran calls her Muhsana, fortress against the devil. They say that she is the one responsible for our downfall from paradise. But the Prophet Muhammad said, Paradise? Paradise is under the feet of a woman, a mother. And that's not all. She has been given rights and protection in every sphere of life. She has all the basic human rights, including the right of inheritance, of owning property, of choosing her husband, of getting dowry, of divorce, of not only earning money, but even keeping every single cent she earns. And what not. You name it, and it's there. <coughs> but let me make it clear that this earning money thing, in Islam, it is not the responsibility of a woman. Her responsibility, her duty, is with Allah and with her family. And if she takes care of that, alhamdulillah, she's in good shape, according to the Prophet Muhammad. That's enough for her salvation. But this does not mean that her duty is to slave away at home like a bondsmaid. This was at least not the practice or the teaching of our Prophet Muhammad or his companions. Once, a man came to the Caliph Umar bin Khattab. He wanted to complain about his wife. He was standing outside uh, the Caliph's house, and from inside, he could hear Caliph Omar's wife giving him a hard time. But Omar's voice was nowhere to be heard. He thought, well, looks like the poor Caliph is in the same torment I am. He started going back. Omar saw him and called him back, heard his story, and you know what he replied? He said, do you not see that my wife cooks my food, washes my clothes, suckles my children, thus relieving me of the necessity of employing a cook, a washerman, and a nurse? even though she is not in the slightest degree responsible for this. And more than that, I have peace of mind on account of her, and I am protected from adultery. In view of all this, I put up with her excesses, and I would advise you to do the same. And the Prophet uh, Muhammad said, the more civil and kind a person is to his wife, the more perfect in his faith he is. The Quran says, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرِهْتُمُوهُنَّ فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Live with your wives, treat them with kindness and equity. If you take a dislike to them, it may be that you dislike something, but Allah has kept a great deal of good in it. The Qur'an further says, وَلَا تُمْسِكُوهُنَّ طِرَارًا لِتَعْتَدُوا وَمَنْ يَقَلْ ذَلِكْ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ وَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا آيَاتِ اللَّهِ كُسُوَةً do not keep your wives by force so that you may injure them or hurt them. And whoever does this wrongs his own soul. Do not treat the words of Allah as a joke. My dear brothers, Allah means business here. And my sisters, this does not mean that we take advantage of all these examples and start taking advantage of men. No. What I am saying is simply that a woman is not an unpaid 